drug I've done Your love removes me from my throne When you depart I start to run I'm chasing not to be alone The light around you changes color with your mood And I'm your follower Your very life is an enigma And I wanted you since we were children La 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 To be with you I've broken love Myself along the way Yeah, yeah, yeah You know you're worth the pain you cause I die for you without delay Satellites Podcast Live, Season 2, Episode 5. Tonight's guest star, Bill Holmes, Isaac Singleton Jr., and Chris Calhoun. Here are your hosts, Aubrey Christine Trujillo and Jerry G. Angelo. Oh, oh we're back. <laughs> right on. Congratulations to to Robert Damon who is uh producing this show. Um all Woo-hoo! running the running the gamut. Yes. Uh wow. So I'm we're Jerry back. I'm Jerry Angelo. I'm Aubrey Christine Trujillo. We are so excited to be back. I know if you had joined us a couple weeks ago, we had a terrible technical issue and the it came internet from mars gods. yes yes but we are actually um streaming from mars or we, we have that with spacex and all that so that's all happening now so we're in good shape nothing's gonna go wrong um unless it's dramatic uh anyway we uh what you just heard was uh david david paratiaco uh he that's his uh one of our songs with helium three music label uh with rocket pig 
and we have some we have an, we're going to be sharing our our first trailer we have three films out the gate with rocket pig um one of them is going to be introduced today which uh, very few people know about one of them is called obscure which a lot of people know about because that's the one that we have been forecasting and in, in production currently right now and we're wrapping up and then we have a third one that has also not been disclosed but it's also completed and uh and we're with carcass studios joe lujan and uh so this is going to be fantastic this is uh, i was telling you oh i was a bird how do you build an empire uh well you 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 were telling me the rules of yeah the empire. Th there's there's uh rules of rocket pig um one is fun have fun two is adventure adventure mm -hmm. three is fun again and four was adventure more adventure again. and five is have more fun and six is more adventure so and i think it just goes on from there but. yeah it just keeps on repeat <laughs> because uh, we only get a little bit of time here on this earth and we might as well enjoy it to the fullest the most that we can um god knows that we put enough pressure and weight on each other and ourselves and all that stuff so once you evolve to a point where you realize you don't have to deal with that man it comes so easy all the, I think all the 19 years of work um, is, you know, I, I got I got more done in one year than in 19 of just doing everything. But you have to learn and you have to evolve to that. But So we're very excited tonight because we're going to be talking with some amazing voiceover guests. Um, uh, they, they are, I mean, I'm going to let. Robert introduced well, them because they I, I I can't tell I can't tell you I I'm geeking out I love them so much uh, I'm a huge fan I love voiceover tell about Bill. well Bill Holmes is amazing he has um, definitely helped me in my career um, he is just somebody who takes takes you from where you are and shows you some simple simple ways to harness your talent. Go into a room. There he is, the, the voiceover, voiceover doctor. doctor. He's one of the the he's the one of the biggest, uh, the most uh, prestigious uh, voiceover and uh, respected voiceover uh, coaches, Producers, voice coach, directors in in Hollywood, Los Angeles, Compo and, Studios. Yes. Oh my gosh, what a cute picture! What? Okay, um, so like and, I was saying, talent from wherever you're at. <laughs> there's Bill, and he takes you. It gets you into a room where you're comfortable and you're delivering. Um, in a way that's very natural, that suits the, um, that's uh, either the commercial or the video game or whatever um, you've gone into audition for or to be in the room and do. So um, Robert has um, some more information about Bill that we want to share with you guys. And then we're going to invite him into. And then we also have Chris Calhoun, uh -huh. who is uh, one of our leads in Obscura. Um, when you, you and Chris worked together, yeah, we, did. Uh, we all yeah, three closely. of us worked together. He yeah. is a, Chris is a, Chris is a funny guy. There's, Chris is, I always say he's not a blimp in another world and he is, he's so talented and funny and um, he plays, uh, anyway. And Isaac. Yeah, well, and then Isaac, <laughs> Isaac is one of our leads in American Warfighter, which oh my was gosh. my directorial debut. American Warfighter, as you know, came on Netflix and is on uh, Amazon Prime and it was a tribute to all our service men and women and brings awareness to PTSD. That's very important to know, but Isaac was fantastic. And Isaac has some incredible credits in the voiceover world. He's done amazing work on screen and uh, I'm behind the mic. And the first thing I said to Isaac was, what a voice, because we were over the phone and I was just like, wow, that's an epic instrument. So, yeah. so <laughs> let's uh, let's start our show with our guests. And uh, and also we have a, a special person. We have uh, Tiffany um, who's going to be coming on and getting to interact with the three of them. Some questions, some specific questions. So. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Robert. Well, when I started, <laughs> when Bill came up with the project, idea, I came up with this whole yeah, idea, Bill's this whole wanted... concept. Um, it, was, good, it was something, it was because of my love for old radio shows. I'm oh, not, what? <laughs> you don't know how this is going to go. I'm not sure you want that on camera. Shane came up with the concept. So Shane, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody. About this. I feel like I'm going to be blamed for everything. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up listening to old time radio. And so um, I graduated college and I started producing a, a show called We Were Live. So far, so good. So, <laughs> I met Bill at a party, and uh, I talked him into doing an audio version of A Christmas Carol. And I talked him into it by um, making him think that he'd never hear from me again. <laughs> I was kind of 
trying to come up with the this uh, idea of these this audio series uh, as a big sort of a business concept. Well, I mean, he kept calling me up saying, "Hey, listen, if I put this thing together, can you can you get it produced? Can you get?" You know, your friends in this and all this stuff. And I said, look, buddy, you find me the money. I'm your man. Phil kept going, well, just come back out here and we'll work. When you're not here, we're not going to work. And I was living in New York. And he looked at me one day and he's like, what are you worried about? What are you worried about? What are you worried about? I go, honestly, I'm worried about the writing of it. And he goes, don't worry. JoJo will do it. Yeah. I got the writers. Don't worry about it. I got the writers. Right, Joe? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is it my turn to talk? <laughs> then they brought me in. And so they brought me in. Shane explained everything and how it goes. And he told me, I mean, as a writer, you want to just still look at it from uh, from a film perspective and even the visuals as well. And then he'll handle adding the elements in terms of sound. And I work, I mean, Kanji, look at this guy's face. That's, that's hard work. That's all you got to look. Every time I come in the weekend, he's just like, so I'm like, I know he's been doing a lot, and then I hear what he did. I'm like, oh yeah, he's been working a lot. I was in the office in the back, and he says, uh, he says, could you come back here? We have a problem. And I was like, ah, oh, Jesus, what the hell did he do now? <laughs> so, I, so I go back there, and I, I see a, on my chair at my desk is an envelope, and I look, I open it up, and I go, ah, oh, shit, is this the money? He goes, yeah, we have a problem. <laughs> now we gotta go make this thing, okay? The world of Carcerum is a fantastical world. It's filled with different monsters and creatures. There's types of magic there. There are beasts. It's a different way of telling a story of the world that we live in. And they're human stories, and they are characters that are driven by emotions. But even in the fantasy world, you still have to ground the emotions in something real. Incredible. Yeah. Wow. That looks like a great show. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I and got chills. This incredible producers on that too, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for showing all that. I really appreciate that. It's uh right now that's our our, our baby right now. So it's incredible. Uh, wow. What a show, what a cast. It's it's epic. We've, we've how, been... how long have you been in entertainment? Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> great pick. Uh, I've been in the entertainment business, uh, right out of pretty much right out of high school when I was about 18 years old. Uh, I actually, uh, I, I grew up in a very small town in Illinois. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that's my wife's favorite picture of me. Actually. That, that's what oh. wow. <laughs> that's uh, a hand model on there. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, what's weird about the whole hand modeling thing. They don't even match. Look at that. They don't match. It's crazy. <laughs> old hand modeling jokes. Um, but, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I did some acting in high school as, as we all do. And, uh, I grew up in a little town called Gurney, Illinois. And, um, oddly enough with many other actors and directors and writers and weathermen and whatnot that, that have gone on to really good illustrious careers in this very small little town. And, um, uh, I, my, my buddy Al Lanonen, said, uh, hey, I'm going to go audition for this play out at, uh, it was a girls college in Lake Forest, Illinois called Barrett College. It's not there anymore because uh, now I'm the old guy. And uh, and I auditioned for the play with my buddy Al on a whim and, and we got cast in a Commedia dell'arte play called The Mandrake Root. And uh, they paid us, they paid us $100 and I was 18, 19 years old. 
And from that day on, I said, I'm a professional actor. This is what I do now. So, wow. Cause I just thought it sounded so cool. And, uh, and from there, uh, you know, the rest is a, a mediocre climb to a pretty successful career. <laughs> and tell us about your studio, the compost. Uh, compost Productions is a, a studio that I started. I actually started it uh, 20 some years ago, yeah, maybe even more than that. Um, uh, I, I actually produced a play here in L.A., a, uh, an improv comedy play with music. And uh, it was called Mulch Ado About Nothing. <laughs> and, uh, and my wife at the time was into composting. So that's how, why we came up with Compost Productions. <laughs> Because basically I had a, uh, can I swear on the show? Are we allowed? Yeah. To okay. Fuck yeah. So, no, I'm uh, I, <laughs> so I, uh, I had some amazingly talented writer friends and, and whatnot that did, back in the comedy days. And I knew that they had all these sketches and things that were just collecting dust and just sitting on a shelf. So what I did is I took everything and I kind of put it all together and we turned it into something. Therefore, the compost con. <laughs> Nice. And uh, we call the concept uh, compost productions uh, much to do about nothing. And it was, it was an amazing uh, show. We, we had some amazing people and Neil Flynn was in it. and Beth Hall. Well, and which city are you located in, in Los Angeles? We are in uh, North Hollywood. Our studio now is in North Hollywood. Uh, okay. With, uh, you remember working with this one here? I do. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I, I think, I think I made you sing. Like you did, did play, right? Oh, okay. You can make her sing again too. You actually have the power to do that. You, man. Once you know, this is the thing. I've been teaching for a long, long time, probably about thirty-five some years now. I've been teaching voiceover primarily, and um, what I love about the teaching aspect of the business is when people come in and they have skills that I don't have. Uh, you know, because again, everybody, you know, everybody comes in, oh, I have an interesting voice. My wife says I do funny voices and stuff. And they always are like, let me teach me how to use it. And I'm always, you know, and they're usually, I like, what do you do now? Well, I'm an anesthesiologist. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm always like, you know, my God, you're a doctor. Why don't you help people that way? Instead of just yakking at a stick and, you know, making noise. Uh, but, uh, so when people as, as talented as Aubrey is, uh, you know, again, again, she says, you know, I do opera, you know, I'm an opera singer. So of course my first thing thought is, Oh great. Yeah. She's not going to be any good. She's an opera singer, you know? <laughs> and then of course I'm like, Oh good. Okay. Opera singer, you know, give us a little something. And she, you know, those melodious tones just, you know, just, you know, much like on Let's Make a Deal, uh, ah, they just, I they just go <laughs> spewing out of her face. And I was like, holy mackerel, you're an opera singer. <laughs> and it was it was just so much fun uh, to to listen to you. And then you were kind enough to to uh, give me some tickets to an opera. And my wife and I went. We loved it. We just thought it was wow. great. Which <laughs> opera did he go to? Um, Did you guys see the magic Not food? Oh, Traviata. Traviata, Traviata. Traviata. That's right. Traviata. That's right. Can you do yeah. something from Traviata? I, I, didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't know what they were saying. I couldn't remember which one it was. <laughs> do something. Yeah, they did. They did do it in Italian. I'm sure. Italian. Okay. So Aubrey's <laughs> going to do something from Traviata from Italian. I'll put Traviata. you on the spot. Oh my word. Just oh little, my goodness. Come on. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to step away from our little mic right now. because <laughs> it, might, it might get loud. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, oh, you do it then. No, I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sing, sing, sing to me what you sang to Wayne Brady. What did you say? Oh, sing to Wayne Brady? yeah, uh, absolutely, Bill. Yeah, do that. you heard a glass cracked in the back it just it, it exploded behind. i think the crystals in my ear they're all shattered now too i, I again that, that that just uh brings me so much joy to oh. when there's somebody as talented as that around me and and i do that with everybody aubrey too uh i have a, a very good friend his name is jim davy and he's he's a magnificent drummer he used to be the the uh i think the director of character voices over at, at disney 
uh, years ago oh, and, oh, and he's wow. retired now but he's just an amazing drummer and i'm every time i see him and there's drums around which is always because he always has drums i'm like i'm like drum solo come on man drum solo yeah. <laughs> you know so uh so yeah it's one of my favorite things to do when there's talented people around i think they should perform don't you oh man so That's sweet <laughs> so bill we're gonna be meeting some other guests but before we do that i'd like to ask you what so where you're at right now in, in everything that you've learned and you've come to, to this point in your career, um, wherever that might be, um, what, that point. what are, what's some of the most <laughs> important things that you can share with uh, other people who are coming into the business or in the business? What are, what's something, I know there's probably dozens and dozens of things, but what's some, some education well, or experience or motivation, inspiration? I mean, I mean, in a nutshell, yeah, um, it's uh, it's very much like your philosophy of of your business. Uh, when people come to me for voiceover, you know, knowledge or whatever, um, I always I always look at them because uh, I have these young. I just worked with a young kid in Scotland today, and mm -hmm. and I have a lot of young kids around, and I always look at them and I say, look, do this because it's fun. You want to do this because it's fun. You don't want to do this to make money. You don't want to do this, you know, because you want to do this because you kind of have to do it. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've done many, you know, uh, you know, not, nothing huge. I'm, I'm definitely a blue collar actor. I'm, I'm not one of the big time guys. I mean, I see Isaac, you know, he's, a, he's in the pirates movie and, uh, but I see guys like that, but I'm not one of those guys, but I've always, I, I really don't do on camera things anymore. Uh, mo mostly I do voiceover and I produce and direct mostly now. Cause that's, that's my passion. That's my joy now. But when it comes to acting, I've always stuck with the voiceover because, because it's always been a lot of fun. It's the mm. friendliest people I've ever met in my life. I mean, you saw in our little montage that you showed, I mean, I, I get to work with guys like, you know, Maurice LaMarche and, and, you know, Rob Paulson, J uh, Jane Lynch was in there, uh, Sharon Muthu, uh, incredibly talented young woman, uh, Dana Powers, and and let's let's uh, mention young Shane Salk as well. But I mean, these people are just so talented. But most mostly, they're just fun to be around. And and I mean, Carcerum has been the series that we're doing has been. We've been we, Shane and I have been working on this for three years now. We're in our third year. And there it is. There you go. There you are. Oh, oh make sure you get your merch. Mm. Uh, That's right. I like the mask. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, but it's always we're we're always laughing and we're always having a great time. And and we're just creating these things that have never been created again. So I would say to the young kids out there or the old kids out there, you know, because I have a lot of students who are in their you know, close, close to my age now uh, that, you know, I mean, do it because it's a really good time and that you really love doing it. There are so many people that come to me as, uh, again, I'm kind of the voice of a doctor as, as I've been called. And uh, they come to me and they say, you know, am I good enough to do this? Should I keep doing this? And I always go, yeah, if you're having a good time, you should do it. Uh, because I like to say as a young actor in Chicago, I went to the Goodman School of Drama and they they uh, quite quite uh, quickly threw me out. <laughs> I well, like to say, Jerry, I like to say I've been thrown out of some of the best schools in the country. Okay? Good. That's awesome. <laughs> and, and, and I don't regret it, though. Uh, you know, uh, Elizabeth Perkins came from that school. Tom Amanda's Kevin Anderson. A lot of a lot of great people came out of that school and they loved that school. It, it just wasn't for me. And, and I went on to have a fine career in Chicago. And then I came out here and, and did a few things here and there. And, uh, uh, you know, so if you're doing it, have a good time. Keep doing it as long as you're having a good time. Don't try to make money. If you're good, if you're really good and you're having a great time, the money will come. The money will come. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a difficult business these days. It's a difficult yeah, business yeah. these days. But it's the only business during the pandemic that has been thriving. It has been thriving. Wow. I have, I have never been busier. Our studio has never been busier than during this pandemic. I give most of the credit to my partner, Shane Salk, for pulling in a lot of the business because we're, you know, we're recording video games here and we're producing wow. our own thing and we're doing our own voiceover jobs and whatnot. So, so it's a digital world and we're all, 
we, you know, we're all trapped in a box right now. And that's what voiceover people are. We're trapped in a box most of the time. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's such great news, Bill. I'm so excited to hear that you guys are thriving right now. It's, you know, it's not, it's not the story of everybody's um, careers in this, yeah, I, in this I, particular I, I, I moment. So that's wonderful. Pandemic, I, I consider myself so, so very lucky. We've all been very healthy. My, my, Children all kind of got stuck out here. I have, you know, children in their thirties, but they all kind of get, they get my, I'm a grandfather right now. Uh, Congratulations. But, thank you very much. My grandson <laughs> is just over a year old. His name is William. Nice. Oh my goodness. And, uh, but he was born on January 19th, right before this pandemic hit. Wow. And, and all my children came from, my daughter lives in Chicago. My son lives down in Costa Rica. And my other son lives right here in California. And, but they all came here to meet the grandchild and then the pandemic hit and they weren't allowed to go anywhere. Yeah. We have a full house. We have a full house, but uh, I, you know, no complaints. I've, I've been loving being around them. And uh, it, it's funny cause it's like my children are in high school again. Cause they're all contained you know, together. <laughs> <laughs> all the little bickering and fighting that always went on in high school is all coming back up. It's boiling back up, but it's been, yeah. it's been great. And, and I feel for everyone out there in the pandemic and, and the tragedies that have happened, I am not complaining. And I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I really do. That's wonderful. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really hard to find the silver lining. Like you said, it's a, it's a difficult business. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Cause I, oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Definitely hit with me. Yeah. And I, I do want to say real quick, um, Bill, if uh, Bill Pullman and Robin Williams had a kid, I think it would be you. I've, I've never heard Robin Williams. I have heard the Bill Pullman thing. People yeah. Well, maybe he didn't always have a beard. But, yeah, but in this... yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. This is, yeah. This is the thing. I, I, you know, I, see I, that. I, I see that. I do want to give credit to the, that little girl that I was directing. Her name is Abigail Podbielski, and she is in Carcerum, if you want to hear her. Oh, and, is she? And Jerry, I've I've just uh, I'm a little hurt that I'm not in any of your any of your movies. <laughs> you haven't well, we have me on the show is in your movies, and I you know you didn't even call me Jerry. We I know. Well, I'm <laughs> grateful to get to have met you <laughs> within uh, within this week, and so this will change. Uh, this, oh, and uh, and you know what? This is a she's a producer now too. So I mean, big time. Yeah, you. there's good stuff. We we got a lot of stuff to go. And, Aubrey and will the thing talk. Is, talk. I got a few scripts that I want to get. Going. Ooh, yay! <laughs> Awesome. Well, we have to bring on our next guest, um, Mr. Isaac Singleton Jr. Isaac Singleton. He. You might know him as Thanos. Thanos what? from the as a as superhero, and we, we have a dog in the and, room too. Uh, and the other voiceover is a little dog. Yeah. So uh, let's go uh, say hi to Isaac. Isaac the man. If you're the mightiest Earth has to offer, your planet is doomed. The Power Stone. Finally, I claim what is mine. <laughs> if I can't hit you with the hammer, then I'll hit the hammer with you! Traces and conduits. Four terminals control access. Simultaneous upload of keys required. Laser beak. Eject. You are much stronger than I expected. I am finished toying with you! Now you die! You fools. Don't understand what you've done! Only I can bring balance to the universe. With the snap of my fingers, I will turn everything to dust! This is it! The fight of the century! You ready to get schooled, bats? What do you want to start? How about getting your asses kicked 101? Nothing to say? Wow. Oh man, I don't think you can say asses on the on on satellites oh. though. You know, oh <laughs> Hi Isaac, welcome. Oh your mic is uh, muted. You're Isaac. on mute. 
I'm just kidding. I'm talking. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> it's happened so many times. I just, I just, yeah. I was no, it's okay. <laughs> anyway, hello. Thank you very much for inviting me this evening. Oh, thank you for coming on. Yeah. I'm very happy to be here. Man, Isaac, you're, you're one of my, my my favorite actors I got to work with and uh, and went for my directorial debut in directing with American Warfighter. There's a there picture of you. I can't believe it. I was already like five years ago. It's so so no, wild. It's flying by too fast. Mm -hmm. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> so we're still here. Man, the um the, t tell us what about tell us about what we saw with these um with some of those uh uh, the, the cartoons and the video video game and tell us tell us about did, Isaac. Did you have you always done voiceover? You do so much on screen as well. How did you when get it? I was a baby. I wasn't doing voiceover then. No. Oh. I was still in diapers and just, you know, taking a bottle, whatever, you know. But when I got older, I would I was in public speaking when I was in high school, but I didn't have any desire to be an actor. My call my my goal was to become a commodities broker and work on Wall Street or work in the commodities market in Chicago. Uh, and then um, my sophomore year of college, I took a theater course for fun because I've been in public season since I was in ninth grade. And a theater director at my university asked me in one of the plays. I got the lead in the play and then started doing the play with the theater majors. And some other things happened. I got some signs from God that I was supposed to be an actor. I said, okay, God, I'll listen to you. I transferred to university, changed my major, and that's why I pursued acting. Got my degree in communications, and I've been pursuing acting ever since. Wow. But to ask your question, I did voiceovers for like theater productions when I was in college. And then when I was living in Orlando, I did local commercials there. And I also did some voiceover stuff down there. And I started my acting career in Orlando pretty much. Wow. Are you from Chicago, Isaac? No, never even lived in Chicago. Been there once. And I went to Chicago a couple of years ago, specifically because I wanted to go see my favorite painting in person. So oh, I flew nice. to Chicago to go see the Nighthawks painting by Edward Hopper at the Art Institute. Yeah, and I love natural history, so I went and saw the Field Museum, uh -huh. and I just went and had a great time. Yeah, I'm I'm from Chicago. I started. Yeah, so that's why I went there, and I had the oh, Chicago wow. pizza and everything else. But I went there. Can, you, can you say that again for Robert Demont, our producer, what that painting was? Because I'd like him to to try to look it up real quick and show it too. Oh, so you we're... know the painting. It's a, it's it's it, it's called Nighthawks by Edward Hopper, and they spoof it a lot. Like they they'll put other oh. characters inside of it. It's people sitting in that diner late at night. There's three people sitting in a diner, and the, and, the, and the guy on the other side of the counter is serving them. And it's wow. like three o'clock in the And morning. you went out to Chicago just to see the original of this. Yes. That's yes. pretty, that's pretty, that's original. I never heard of anyone doing that for art. I guess people do that for art, but. Um, well, I, just, I mean, I've loved that painting since I was a child. And I see spoofs of it, like they'll have Elvis Presley and Marilyn oh, Monroe yeah. and James Dean and Humphrey Bogart, and it called. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, um, I just looked it up on, maybe you on can my phone. Pull it up I had and show it on the. But the original painting is called Nighthawks, and they've put Star Wars characters in it. And all these. Are yeah. Oh, yeah. But it's a really good painting, and I just wanted to see it. I and I flew out there it specifically to the do it. Properly. Just look there. You can kind of see it. I'm it's sure not focusing well. I'm not doing it any justice. That's all right. Similar sure to people know the painting when they see that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I didn't know, I, American Gothic was there too. You know, the guy and his niece. They're they're there. The guy and his daughter with the pitchfork is there. I didn't know there a lot of paintings that are there. I didn't even know were there. Wow. So well, we we successfully made ourselves blurry. I'm not sure <laughs> how to fix that. We'll continue on, it's but artistic. yeah, it's uh, it's well, creative. You, you, you've been blurry to me since I started. I got. Ah. <laughs> oh, tell you and uh, Bill's uh, uh, he loves tequila, so we're gonna get him a uh, a thing of tequila, and it's like three levels down from the <laughs> brand that he likes because it's yeah, out of our uh, financial realm at the moment. I'm gonna come in on you. Zoom in. Zoom back out. That yeah. that did nothing. That that helped not at all. Okay. <laughs> right. Well. Anyway, Isaac, uh, t tell us about um, tell us about how your uh, your experience with like the studios because you've worked with some of the major studios and some big directors, and uh, you know a lot of uh, is uh, of all the people that I know, you're I I would say you're one of the you know the furthest along in, in the having that experience. You know what? I I will just say this. I have had a lot of blessings from God. And yeah, like even my first movie when I got out here was Galaxy Quest. 
Wow. You know what I mean? My first show I did when I got, I moved out here in May of 1998. And, and that my first job two months later was on the X-Files working on that. And Chris Carter wow. directed that episode. And then I started getting more work after that. And I just was having a good time. But, you know, oh, I just. Galaxy Quest. That's such yeah, a good, I played, that's a good I, film. I yeah. Guard. So I'm three hour makeup every single day. So it was great. You know, it was my first experience on the film here. Crazy. And uh, then after that, man, I got a few other things too. And then I got anger management after that. And I worked with Warwick Ball and Arliss. And, you know, wow. I, <laughs> cool. what's what's the difference between um, working per, um, at that level with voiceover compared to as an actor? Well, I mean, I, all of it's acting. Right. Yes. But I mean, um, for all, I'm not I, the voiceover world, even though I, I've been doing this for so long, acting mm -hmm. voiceover is something I I haven't really done. Um, and it is the reason I haven't done it is because I, I realize it's a whole other um, even though it's so similar, it's also its own business. There's a whole bunch of other ways that you have to, to market and strategize and all that stuff. And I didn't have I don't didn't know the resources and stuff. So I put all my, you know, my efforts into acting. So voiceover is very specific. I want to learn for myself. You you show up and then they just take you to a room and I mean, like, I really don't know. Okay, well, okay, well, when I do a cartoon, they usually send me the script beforehand. So I've read the cartoon over, especially like, let's just say we just showed that we did Thanos. I did Thanos for, for Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy and for Avengers Assemble. So I did it for both of those because he would go back and forth in those, both, both those universes. And then send me a script beforehand. I already know Thanos as far as what his character is, you know, because you go back to the beginning of your first acting class, you learn who, what, when, where, why, understand what your character is all about. So I know the character in and out as far as Thanos is concerned and what his agenda is, what his emotional feelings are about certain things. And so they give me that script. I read it over so that when I go into the room, because when I go and I do the, the when I go and do the character, the, we're all in there together. So Thor is in there. Everybody's playing these different characters for the different cartoons. We're all in the room wow. together. And they say, okay, we're going to read lines one through 20 first. And so we read those through those lines. And if I'm in, and if my character is in those lines, I stand up and do my reading. If not, I just sit there and watch everybody else doing their work. And do you have there to memorize like you do on a set or script or anything? Or you just, memorize. you always have your paper with you? We've got our script right there in front of us. And so always. So do you, you don't even, you don't really have to memorize the whole scenes. You, you have to be familiar with it, but you can just read off, off there as you want. Yeah. Cause you know, you know, the scene, like I said, you read it over. So now when you're ready to read it, you know what kind of inflection you want the character to have. You know what kind of emotion you're going to read with the character as you're doing it, as you're reading the lines. Because you don't even memorize it. You're not on screen there. You just they're going to put that in with the with the with the uh, with the animation. So you don't need to memorize it. Oh. Yet. So that's that's know, the beauty of voiceover. You got to throw the feeling behind it. That's all you got to do: is the feeling and emotion and intention behind it when you're reading it. That's it. The beauty of voiceover is it's an open book test. Everything is right there in front of you. All the time. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I love it. That's what I love about it is not memorizing things. I'm so, like, Bill, characters I get to play because I've played so many characters. I mean, I've played I don't know how many hundreds of characters I've played now because yeah. I've done so many video games. I mean, for World of Warcraft, for Blizzard alone, I've worked in at least four, uh, three of their different, their different, uh, what do you call it? That you I've done mm -hmm. World of Warcraft, I've done Diablo, I've done a few different ones of theirs. Not played like. Yeah. World of Warcraft alone, I've probably done 30 something characters, individual wow. characters for there. So, from ice giants to yeah. elves to orcs. I mean, I play, I'm Stitches, you know, he's a big gigantic zombie that's got a cleaver and a hook and oh. a big belly that can eat you. I play that character. So, I do wow. a lot of different characters. I do different sounds. A lot of times I go in and do a voiceover. I mean, I'm not, I don't say a single word the whole session. It's wow. all feature noises. Cool. Wow. So Bill, for here's a thought. So like, so say someone comes to you and yeah. they're, um, say they're my, myself, say, you know, I know I'm experienced, unexperienced, but I come to you and you hear the voice quality. Everyone's unique. Like if she comes in, she, I don't, you know, she doesn't, as an actor, she doesn't go to play homeless or, you know, go to play, you know, certain types of roles because we're kind of stereotyped as what we are, which is fine. When you hear someone's voice, an actor comes in, do you say, like, these are your three strongest, uh, you know, types of roles you should go for? Or how does that work? No, not really. I mean, uh, I, 
a, a lot of what voiceover is is commercials as well. Um, the video games, the animation, that's what we all want to do. That's all the fun stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> usually the bread and butter is commercials, but in commercials, they just want to hear you the way you are. Okay. Okay. And when you get into video games and, and animation, like Isaac is talking about, I've, I've done a few of those myself too. It's uh, mo most of the better teachers out there will, will teach you that the acting comes first. E even you heard Isaac say it you know, earlier, uh, the acting comes first and usually the voice will kind of follow the acting. Once, once you, once you figure out the, the who, what, where, and everything that, that he talked about earlier, um, then, then you can kind of get into that voice. If you, if you, if you walk into it just with the voice, but the acting's not there, chances are it's not going to be that great of a performance and chances are, you know, they're not going to hire you because, because, uh, uh, and Isaac will tell you, you know, you walk in there and you got to do, you know, four hours at a stretch sometimes, or sometimes mm. longer. Um, wow. so you need to be able to sustain that character and live within that character for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm in a video game called Fallout 4, and and wow. uh, it was it was the most fun I've ever had as an actor because you know video games are always big secrets. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it's called. And so I basically showed up to the job, and they said, "Okay, you're this guy." I hadn't seen a picture of my character or anything, <laughs> and the director kind of explained what was going on, and he, he explained the voice he wanted, and I kind of. Yeah, I kind of that was a guy down in here, and and he goes, all right, get in the booth, let's go. And we just started knocking out lines. I was like, oh my god, this is so much fun, wow. <laughs> because you get to use all of your acting skills, all of your improv skills, you know, all of your voice technique, everything in there. And then after about you know four to eight hours, depending on how many, I mean, I had like four hundred, some eight hundred lines, whatever it was. Um, then you're done. It's done. And it's forever. And it's out there right now. You know, uh, it, it's really, it's crazy to me. I mean, again, Isaac here has had much more experience with many more games. Uh, uh, and it's, it's, I don't know about you, Isaac, but when people say, you know, hey, what game are you in? Are you in this? I, I, I usually go, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I think I'm in that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly true. Because a lot of times I go in and they have a different name for it. Right, exactly. And I don't, even, I don't even really put them on my resume because you know I didn't right. put my theatrical self on my resume. But like I, I was I at, a, and I don't play the video games. I really don't play games. I, don't I, do, I have voice will travel. That's what I feel <laughs> yeah. like. I, I, I worked with, so I worked, I worked, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was at my best friend's house a couple of years ago, and he was playing online with his brother who was in New York, and we were here in L.A. And then he was playing this character. And I was like, oh, that's a character I did. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I'm you like, dated. Oh, dude, I was like, dude, oh, dude. Dude. I was playing. He was playing some game. There, I'm like, oh, that's one of the characters I did. I hear that. I remember that now. You know, but uh, I don't even. I, w I was directed by this great director, Kalel Bogdanov. Have you worked with Cal yet? I don't I think, think so. Okay, he's great. He he directed all the Fallout Four stuff, and uh, and again, I don't play the games. I really didn't know. I've never heard of Fallout Four in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm this old guy, you know, and I just got the job, and and I get in there. And he's explaining everything to me. Great, great, great. And we take a break after about a couple hours. And he's he's on his on his computer talking to somebody. And I go, hey, who are, who are you talking to? Are you talking to your girlfriend there or something? And he, he goes, no, 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 I'm talking to the mouse. I'm 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 on online with Disney right now because I'm also I'm also directing Star Wars. I'm directing some Star Wars stuff. And I just go, oh my gosh, can you get me in Star Wars? He goes, hey man, you're in Fallout Four. <laughs> <laughs> and I, didn't realize, I didn't realize what a big deal that was <laughs> you know so so it was uh it was kind of eye-opening that that was kind of my introduction into these big video games and stuff it was, it's mm. fun to be in them i gotta tell you when I mean, isaac i'm guessing you go through it when when you tell people the names of your characters that that you do they just go they go nuts they go go crazy mm -hmm. You know, well, it's funny because sometimes though, people run into me like when I'm at Comic Con, they're like, Oh, you did oh. this voice, and I'm like, Oh, yeah, I think I did do that. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I don't really write them down, yeah, but you know, I just, I just, I have the voice and will travel, and I love to do it, and it's a lot of fun I, to me. I, I, I had a fun you know? Comic Con experience, I was at the LA Comic Con. and I went there with Richard Horvitz and a few other big, big time cartoon guys, and uh, we were just in this bar. 
And it was my joke for the evening. I, I was a bit player in a little film called uh, uh, Baby's Day Out. I was cop number two in Baby's okay. Day Out. So when people would say to me, you know, oh, what have you done? I would, you know, because Richard is Invader Zim and all these things, you know. And uh, and we were talking to these kids and they were enamored with Richard. And they go, what did you do? And I said, well, I'm cop number two in Baby's Day Out. <laughs> and they're like what are you talking about you know and all of a sudden about 30 minutes later this kid gets online and he he looks up and he just looks over at me and goes are you on rick and morty i go yeah yeah i think so he's like holy mackerel <laughs> he got so excited with rick and morty he's like why are you talking about babies because <laughs> i thought well, really, just commentary in that movie funnier you know what's was that just commentary in that movie in no, it was uh, Joe Montana. Oh, uh, Joe. Okay, it was Joe. Okay, all right. Yeah, Joe Montana and uh, uh, Joey uh, Pantaloni. Pantaloni. We're gonna we're gonna bring in Chris Calhoun. Chris yeah. is uh, another um, our, our third guest here, and uh, you guys got to meet him in the green green screen room. He was uh, he's one of our lead actors in Obscura with Rocket Pigs Obscura. Um, and what else about Chris? Chris is gonna do uh, some kind of song with his guitar. Oh, um, so let's uh, let's see. I'll put him on the spot. <laughs> bring in Chris. A little folk singing here. <laughs> Work at home log, day three thousand one hundred and sixty-four from my home studio. Working again here. During, the, oh wait a minute, I work here every day. <laughs> Would you look at this roll of quilted northern? So soft, so fluffy, so. Wait, that surprised Angora show bunny. This is Quilted Northern. It's just really nice toilet paper. Shoes off! That's why I wear Skechers slip-on shoes. They're comfortable. And they slip on and off easily as well. You're Tony <laughs> Romo. Slip in a comfort with Skechers slip-ons. If you think traffic's bad now, the future's gonna be a nightmare. Does nobody like the future? Come on, the future. Rated Amber Mature. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, available Friday, October 23rd. At Setter Home, we've been nurturing American traditions for over 100 years. Setter Home. Can a truck change how people feel about a guy? We talked to real people, not actors. We showed them two pictures of the same guy in the same location. The only difference? The vehicle behind him. You know you want a truck. The all-new Chevy Colorado. To know that every child is extraordinary. To remember that every patient is family. The Promise Campaign will ensure that our critical, surgical, and emergency care services are there for children when they need them most. What's your promise? Find your greatness. Max's Tires. If you're the parent of a teenager, you know that when they use their phone, they miss out on what's going on around them. That's why there's the new Safe Driver Car Connection from Straight Talk Wireless. It's a small device that installs in a snap. Protection One brings next level cybersecurity to our country's best small business innovators. You build it, now fortify it. Generating electricity is a complex process, but when you think about it, what we do is pretty simple. We provide energy for life. Bradley Gilbert presents his latest studio release, Just As I Am, featuring the platinum number one single, Bottoms Up. Just As I Am from Brantley Gilbert features 11 brand new tracks, available May 19th at Target. Joe Flacco might be a world champion quarterback, but he's not a world champion car salesman. A car is like two motorcycles stuck together. Joe, let us handle the car deals, like the Ford Freedom sales event going on now at Alpaca's White Marsh Ford, where you can save thousands on new 2016 Fords. Oh my gosh. Welcome, Chris. Chris, oh. Your ad here. Uh-huh. $20. Oh, only 20 bucks. All Chris right. is always man. go ahead and guitar. You got a song for us? Maybe later. Yeah. Oh. Man, <laughs> hey, good to good to have you on satellites. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You look good. Your hair looks fine. It's always the same. <laughs> man, that, you, Don, I mean, you've done so much. I mean, I, there's a whole bunch I didn't even realize that you were that it was you commercials that I recognized. That's the thing. Um, uh, a lot of times people don't realize the work that you do. Like 
you know, Isaac was saying like, and then there's stuff where I've done like, oh yeah, I, I did that. Or you hear it and said, why? That sounds like me. Oh, that is me. You, just, <laughs> you it starts to get lost in the wash after a while, but I appreciate that the work that I'm doing and, and um, yeah. How, how long have you been in the business? I started uh, when I was 15. I, I didn't like school and I went to my local radio station. I want to be a rock star. So is there a kind of music school in the area? And I was playing guitar and out of bands and the uh, program director at the radio station said, well, I could throw you an overnight spin of records. And that's how I started in, in radio and that genre. And I ended up lasting for about 26 years, 27 years. Wow. wow. And worked at all the major markets in, in Canada, like Vancouver, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal. I uh, worked in the Cayman Islands for a year. Um, and I saw the writing on the wall when I was in Vancouver. Vancouver was my longest tenure in radio, about like 15 years at this one station. And it was downsizing, and I, I started getting into acting, the acting bug. I've always liked movies, always wanted to do that, <laughs> and eventually um, uh, took uh, acting lessons. I want to do it the right way. Like I said, like, oh, I'm going to be an actor and see what I can do for five years. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just try something else. I said, no, it's it's a commitment. Same with eventually with voice. When you when this is your career, it's uh, you don't go to medical school to be a doctor for eight, nine years, however long it is, you know, in the middle of an operation one day, decide, ah, yeah, I'm going to quit. I'm out of here. Uh, I don't think that's that's a healthy for anybody with any profession, whatever they do. Like, you know, you know there's changes and stuff and variance, but uh, th that's what I feel about acting and voice acting and doing voice work. Like, it's, it's a commitment, and this is your job, and there's ups and downs and et cetera. You also uh, work in audiobooks, and that's something that uh, we hadn't discussed yet, and that's something that Rocket Pig is is getting involved with as well. Can you uh, share a little bit about that? We almost uh, actually had a deal together that we set up, Rocket Pig set up, and we almost we came so close. I was <laughs> hoping we're, we'd be able to hit that grand slam, but um, can you share for our audience, uh, tell us about the audiobook world? Um, I remember the very first audiobook audition I went out for, uh, the guy hated me. Um, <laughs> I didn't get the gig. Um, I don't know why, because maybe it was just conflict, uh, you know. But yeah, it it is a, it's a different uh, it's a different animal. What did he not like about you? Oh, I'm curious. Um, I just had difference of opinion with the character, and he had one uh, opinion he wanted to stick with. And there was no, like, let's see what we can do together, like collaboration. I, I don't think the collaboration was there. He just, I think he just wanted a talking head. And uh, and I don't like gigs like that. I don't know if Bill or, or Isaac would, um, you know, have the same experience. But sometimes, just going to say it this way, like they're directing you mm -hmm. to just be a talking head, if that makes sense. Because mm -hmm. they like your voice, your timber, but... You, you you try to get your opinion on what the character should be. And sometimes it has to be, you have to be uh, pay homage to what the character is, especially if it's, you know, somebody like Thanos or, or Megatron or whoever. Um, but it's, there is a very big collaborative effort, I think, that needs to happen. So with audiobooks, Chris, there's usually quite a few different characters how do how do you approach that do you give different qualities to the different characters um the narrator has a different quality how do you how do they're you gonna, they're again it depends with like uh the nature of the audiobook sometimes they just want to read like you're the, the narrator through the whole thing you might change your influx a bit with the characters okay. um if if you're good at we you know with doing some different voices just to give it variance uh, especially if you're the only person in that audiobook, uh, you 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 want to make the woman's part kind of sound different from the guy's part. It's like sometimes audiobooks are that way. It's just like a male voice through, barreling through the whole thing. Um, other times they might have two or three different voices. Uh, I, I, I did one where I was the I did the narration, but then. The guy wanted me to do the character in it, one of the main characters, and he was basically speaking throughout the whole thing. And then um, I also did some sound design on it, and he he liked it. So 
you know, with guns in the background, cars are whizzing by and stuff. And um, it, it was fun to do. It was a really good experience. That's really cool. So you feel like you're you're kind of how how long does it take to do an entire book? Because that it, it seems like it would be a very lengthy project. <laughs> months and months. And, <laughs> really? Uh, um, <laughs> sometimes I just do the voice. Like Bill, my uh, do you do audiobooks at your studio? <clears throat> um, the only one I've I've really uh, done is uh, you know the actress Piper Laurie. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I produced her audiobook and she narrated it herself. And yeah, we worked on that for six or seven months. Yeah. Wow. Because she wanted it. She wanted it. She's an amazing actress. If you, if you kids out there don't know Piper Laurie, look her up. She was, uh, she's the original mother in Carrie and she was in the hustler with Paul Newman. I mean, she's a movie star. Yeah. It, was, it, was <laughs> thrill, it was the thrill of my life to work with her and become friends with her uh, because I sat and listened. It was her book. I sat and listened to her whole life story and uh, it was amazing to me. And, but yeah, she, I mean, she would do a chapter and then I would, I, you know, clean it up and send it to her. And then she would call me back. She's like, I, I want to do it again. I don't like it. And I'm like, no, 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 Piper. It's really, <laughs> it's really good. You don't need to do it again. She's like, no, no, I, I think I can do better. I'm like, okay. You know, um, so it just depends on who you're working with and, and what actors. I don't do a lot of audiobooks here because it, uh, I mean, it's usually most actors do that in their own home studios because because they're not big budget things for the most part. No, it, it's going to ask that. Is it, I mean, with the, with six months or a month or how much time you put into it, does it compensate you in a way that seems fair for it, audiobooks? I, it depends on your deal, which kind of yeah. deal you can strike with. It's anything. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, would you say, Chris, it, I mean, for somebody starting out, usually it's like $150 an hour per finished hour. Yeah, and it's it doesn't seem that attractive, but you got to get the experience. And, and yeah. I've been there, you know. I, I'm sure all of us have. Like, hey, I got uh, 50 bucks. Can you voice this commercial that's going to be shown <laughs> on national TV? But okay, I mean, there there are those guys out there. Is Scott Bricks? Is isn't he an audio guy? Uh, but I mean, there are those actors out there that get just the hourly rate just to record it, and then they don't have to do all the. All oh, okay. The so, wow. It just depends on what level you're at and what level the public. Yeah, exactly. Like this is oh, this is uh, John Smith's uh, day rate. Oh, really? He's really expensive. So, well, that's why he's that expensive. He's that good, and people yeah. yeah. Share, share the um, what the uh, when we're we're getting you know like I said we're getting involved with the audiobooks as well, and um, as Bill was saying, the the actors are are being more responsible now. They have to voice the you know the di the dialogue for the book then you also have to go back and edit it um and and make a final polish on it so you have to have a technical aspect as well That's what um we're talking about per yeah hour. right okay it's, um it's the the difference is is that if you get someone who's less um less skilled in this area then you are you're going to be paying like I remember there was a guy named Bellarini, I think it was, and he he came like with like a ten thousand dollar price tag or something like that. But in the process of him reading a novel or whatever, he's he's doing it maybe one one and a half times, um, and then he's got a he's got something that's perfected. Someone who has less experience is going to take you know four or five times or even more in trying to get the same um, you know the same amount of work done. And maybe even at a less quality, just because he's a, he's done it so many times at such a high level, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think he actually um, he actually has someone that does the editing portion of it for him. Yeah, a lot of times you will have somebody you just you're voicing it, and you, so you don't have to go back and do that. But starting out, sometimes the companies require you to do that. They want you to finish hour of audio. They want it clean and everything succinct, and you send it off to them. And therefore, you know, if you're doing stuff at home, you have a home studio like all of us pretty much do. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have uh, good equipment. It's not just a USB microphone into your laptop. Like it's that's a contentious issue with with myself and a lot of friends who are in voice work because so many people want to get into voice work. Yes, it's good to do that. And like Bill says, you know, going in for fun and have fun doing it. Don't expect to make 
big amounts of cash. But if this is something you want to pursue, eventually you're going to have to upgrade your equipment. So it's at par, it's, you know, TV, radio, uh, audio book, uh, podcast uh, quality. Mm. Mm. And I will say too, Chris, you beat out Bellarini um, with your, with uh, your performance. And when we did the, uh, we were doing the tests and stuff. It just, uh, there was a major deal that happened with the blanket of all these, all the books and novels that we we're representing. Um, but man, I was also, I was so excited for you. You, you had no idea what was going on behind the scenes, man. <laughs> I don't know. It was so good. It was so good. We're going to take a quick break. Um, so we just wanted to thank everybody who tunes in to Satellites Podcast Live every week. Um, we really appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can subscribe on Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Twitch. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us on Facebook. So catch us, subscribe where you can, so you can see our inspiring guests every week. We're going to take a little moment because we have an announcement uh-huh. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> if anyone would like to uh, donate or, or spot new any sponsorships with us too, um, just go ahead and reach out reach out to us um, all a million different ways. But you can just, just say that and we will find you. <laughs> However, we have a little, a very special oh, okay. thing that we're sharing tonight. <laughs> yes. So um, so Rocket Pig, a, a lot of you know Rocket Pig. Um, we are, we're going to be, uh, our, we have three feature films that we're going to be um, launching with our distribution and publishing and all that. Uh and we have a trailer that got finished. Um, that got finished today, and we thought we were going to do it on Wednesday to release it. But we thought let's do it on satellites because this is what we're building is our monopoly in the in the Hollywood, <laughs> and we'll start here. So uh, one of our first projects out the gate, which is completed, uh, working with Carcass Studios, Joe Lujan, and Carcass Studios. Uh, this is called The Deception. Um, also, boy yeah, and funny boy, funny boy films. Uh, this is the deception. This is a film that uh, I, I'm a, one of the leads in, and we had a great cast. And it's a, it's a, um, we we don't discriminate against anybody. And with Rocket Pig, and it's about having fun and adventure. And we're all here for the same reasons: is to create. And so here, I'm very excited to show you guys are going to be the very first people to see this trailer. So, any, enjoy your support <laughs> is well is welcomed. Although homosexual encounters among U.S. adolescents may be relatively common, there is much evidence to suggest that its occurrence abates with maturity. Jim. Jim Canones? Yeah. What's your name? Jim. Devin Holmes. Jeff. I'm Devin. Surely you remember me. Is this the friend that you've been telling me about? I declare my intentions to run for the Senate seat from the 11th district in the great state of Maryland. Have you forgotten me? No, I haven't forgotten you. I'll see you the other day. I, I think about you a lot. Why is it you seem to be showing up everywhere I go with? Your fiance is great, Jeff. I just knew this was the only chance to get to see you. I love you. You are on the brink of living a double life, and you hate it. Scandal has a way of doing that to a career. Because it was a member of his staff or because it was a man? Oh man! <laughs> so that our our writer director Jay Derwachter was a dear dear friend of mine. Um, I, I produced this with him. He passed away in the second day of editing, so he never got to see this film completed. It, it actually, I, I don't know, what I'm talking about it. It breaks my heart. Um, but I'm so excited that finally, um, after all this time, this was the first film I produced, and um, I didn't have a I didn't have the experience or anything else to how to get it out there. So now, um, you know, handful of years later, um, now we're able to, uh, you know, Rocket Pig has come to a point to where we're able to take something on like this um, and with the community 
and and get it out there and get it you know get it seen and, and shared um in memory of jay um so anyway to i'm jay. not to, to jay to jay to, to jay yeah yeah to jay thanks <laughs> um so anyway, I, we we don't have to get too much into into that. We just wanted to share that that little thing with the the trailer. <laughs> of course, Chris has to take the biggest swig out of everybody. <laughs> um, the glasses did get bigger as we went. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's uh, we'll jump back in. Um, so we have a uh, we have another. Um, we, I'll let you in, introduce Tiffany. Yes. So Tiffany is um, in Los Angeles and she has a new voiceover studio. She's also a voiceover actress out here as well. And so she um, she had some really specific questions for you guys. So she wanted to pop on and and ask you guys a few questions coming from that perspective. So welcome, Tiffany. Hi. Hello, uh -oh. Tiffany. Oh. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Tiffany. How are hey. you? Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. Wh which uh, part of Los Angeles are you in? I'm in Glendale. So okay. like kind of Burbank so area a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you, uh, so um, are you familiar with uh, any of our guests? Um, I believe I, I saw Bill, uh, I think in 2017 at VO Mastery or something. Uh, Randy Thomas had something going on i'm not sure if he was there or not i think uh so but he's familiar familiar to me got it got it um but yeah you no know, the the work does um isaac is familiar for sure yeah <laughs> All right. and, and nothing on little uh, uh, chris calhoun chris She's calhoun i've heard his work i, I oh, definitely okay. recognize yeah for sure <laughs> but gotcha. i've never met him or anything like that so i was behind <laughs> bill at that event Oh, got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's That's right. uh, you know, in Glendale there, you got a Mission Wine and Spirits on uh, Glen Oaks there. That's the best price for Fortaleza tequila. So. Is that right? Right? How much is the bottle? Uh, at, at Mission, probably about 75 bucks. Oh, 75. all right. The Añejo. You want the Añejo. Añejo. Oh, okay. That's right. Remember that. <laughs> So Tiffany, you had some specific questions for our guests. Let's jump in. Oh, okay. Actually, I really didn't have any um, questions offhand. I didn't know I was supposed to bring any, but um, oh. I but I do. Um, I have my own home studio, and uh, I just got an agent, so that was kind of cool. So my career is just kind of starting. Thank you. Um, yeah. So it's been like four years that I've gotten into this this career. So. Um, yeah, I got the home studio set up, the sound, like the not proofing, but um, dampening and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, so I'm just starting out, just started getting private lessons with coaching last month as well and all that. So um, excellent. Well, I can't recommend um, Compost Productions higher. higher. It's thank you. It's good to know that. that you're you're pretty close. I like that. <laughs> We're right down the street, and there's a taco truck right outside too. Oh, even That's better. <laughs> the best of all worlds over here at Compost Productions. So, well, I guess um, if anything, what do you guys have any recommendations for me? Anything I should be doing? Um, should I be on social media doing anything specific or reaching out to anybody? Or I don't know if you any advice possibly. Um, well, I, I, you know, my advice would be, you know, become the best actor you can be. Yeah. Um, and depending on where you want to go, uh, I, I would say just offhand, start, start with commercials because an agent is most likely going to want to hear your commercial demo reel first. Right. And then usually, uh, if, if the agents out there are in the top 10 or 15 or so, they're going to send you on video game and they're going to send you on animation stuff. So mm -hmm. you, you want to build your, your uh, uh, arsenal of, of demos and whatnot, you know, starting out, but it seems like you're already at that point. Yeah. And Bill, you had once told me that um, creating your own demo reel is kind of like painting your own car. Sure. Uh, it might look yeah. decent, but you'll see the br brush strokes and all of the imperfections along the way. Yeah. So it might be better to have somebody help you put that together. <laughs> I remember you telling me that when we were getting yeah, started. I mean, usually a homemade demo you can you can spot. And, and, and uh, you know, unfortunately, Los Angeles is the type of town that you get one first impression. 
And so you want it to be a good first impression. There, there are many people out there, very talented people who make demos. Um, and, you know, they're very expensive. Uh, and it's just, it's an investment that I think you have to make at some point uh, in order to get the, the top notch agents interested in you. Uh, personally, when we make demos here, we like to try to fool the agents into, into thinking that they're all real spots. So if an agent looks at you and says, how many of these are real? Uh, then, then you're playing poker. Then you kind of got them. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if they think they're real, that means they think you're already yeah. working. And you can always say, well, yeah, I did a lot of work in Chicago. <laughs> well, you're not lying. You probably worked in Chicago, but you know, you're just letting them believe that you did four work. So, so uh, uh, I mean, I, I get in arguments with agents all the time because most of them are my friends now at this point. <laughs> And uh, we argue about what's a good demo and what's not a good demo. But most of the agents that you talk to are going to say to you, yeah, don't make your own demo unless unless you really have the skills to produce something, you know? Yeah. So you, at the beginning, we saw a headshot of you, Bill, um, that was black and white. And of <laughs> course, things moved to color and down the road. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what What's changed with voiceovers? would you say like well what's the 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 comparison from black and white to colored and then with voiceovers like how i mean nothing has changed except the length of your demo i mean i mean uh excuse you know, me interrupt bill can i see your hands oh sure <laughs> they don't match like, <laughs> they don't <laughs> crazy no problem. Problem. <laughs> um, uh, the the length of demos these days are anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute now. Yeah. And wow. back when I started making demos, you can make a two minute, two and a half minute demo and really show off your skills. Um, but in this age of, uh, you know, people don't <laughs> have an attention span uh, out <laughs> in the business these days. Um, it's shorter and shorter. So you, you kind of want to, when you're making a demo, you want to make sure that you're showing off mostly what you sound like in different situations. Uh, and again, it's only my opinion. Um, uh, uh, rather than, oh, I've got to get a McDonald's on there and I've got to get a good car spot. I've got to get a good boo spot. It's really not about the products on your demo. You are the product on your demo. And so you want to show them what your range is within you talking faster, you talking slower, you talking softer, you talking louder, you know, that type of a thing. How many voices that I come out to in one minute? Is it like five? Or is it like 10 or? It just depends on who makes your demo. Anywhere between four to 10 to 12 voices, depending on who's mm -hmm. cutting it, really. Then um, Isaac, is, is your is your uh, voiceover reel, is that, is, I'm sure you have several of them. Is that, in Chris too, is it like a, a minute? You know, mine's online mostly, so it's longer than that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, the one that we had, um, we only showed about a minute and a half of Isaac's, but it's over four minutes long. It's really, yeah. you know, and, and he has all of the visuals to go along with it because many of them have a visual component, like the yeah. cartoons and animation. I, I am mainly talking about people who are just starting out. Yeah. Okay? Because usually if you're getting a demo starting out, you're trying to get an agent. You know, the three of us already have agents, so we can take a little more lives. And most of the stuff on our demos, I'm guessing, is real stuff. Yeah. So you're cutting cutting all that stuff and you're trying to impress them with, you know, your resume as well. So sure, uh, agents are going to be more likely to listen to somebody like Isaac because, you know, look at the all the wealth of of, of work that he has on that. Uh, sure. and, and same same with Chris. I mean, those commercials are very recognizable and, mm -hmm. and everybody I'm sure that everybody listening to your demo, Chris, was going Oh hell, I know that guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I've heard that guy. You know? Yeah. I'm doing that. I'm like, oh, I know who this guy is. You know? So um, the, be the best compliment you can get when as a as a voice person, when you get, you know, they send uh, the benchmark yeah. guy, they send that clip. Yeah. Oh, this is the benchmark guy we're kind of looking for. You know, it could be how, how we want him to sound. And I think over the last 30 years, I think once. I got mine. We want you to sound like this guy. And you're like, I am that guy. <laughs> I, said, I am that guy. Which is also another story I can share another story, but I don't want to get take up too much time. But that's always a nice compliment. Like that's that's our benchmark. That yeah. person is our benchmark. And it just oh. happened the one it just happened to be me. He said, Oh well, that that's cool. me. Oh, okay. Cool, let's get <laughs> I, I, use, 
I used to work you're, you're at that. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I used to be a freelance director at a place called the Voice Caster in town. Ah. A big time voice casting place. And uh, do you remember Murphy Brown? Do you remember Charles Kimbrough from Murphy yeah. Brown? Uh, I, you know, it was, I was running a session that said a Charles Kimbrough type, you know, and, uh, and I walk in the lobby of the voice caster and Charles Kimbrough is sitting on the couch you know? <laughs> and, and I look over at him I, and I said, yeah, you know, I think you got a shot at this one. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, they'll never give it to me. And they didn't, they didn't book no it. No way. <laughs> yep. They booked somebody cheaper who sounded like you. Oh, oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, of course. I just thought that was funny, you know, because I see that and then I look up, I'm like, hey, you're this guy. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, yeah, Chris, I know. I know how you feel. There. I think in, in starting out as a into voice work, just be cognizant of commercials on TV, like stuff that, that you think is in your wheelhouse. Listen to it. And stuff that, you know, those commercials you watch, you're like, oh, <laughs> that voice person has done something fabulous to get that reads. So that sort of stuff. And when I was starting out, I was like, you know, when I'm in radio, so what I have to do would be a better radio broadcaster said, pick up a newspaper and read out loud mm -hmm. for five, 10 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. you, you know, your family might, or whoever you, is in your house going to think you're crazy. Just <laughs> out loud five, 10 minutes a day. Now I record myself doing it usually. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And after you have the luxury, if you audition a lot, you're auditioning all the time. You audition every day. Um, it's it's just there. It's it's muscle memory. But it's just uh, yeah, listening to commercials, stuff, watching stuff on TV, um, and to get into that mindset, kind of that that VO frame of mind. Mm -hmm. you're, you're also listening for things what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's a lot of bad advertising out there that doesn't work. <laughs> But usually that's not the actor's fault. Usually that's the people producing it. It's their fault because, uh, gentlemen, uh, you know, maybe you'll agree with me here. How many times have you gone into the job and they go, oh, my God, Isaac, we loved your audition. Now let's do this, <laughs> you know, and they take you in a totally different direction. And I mean, personally, I always look at them and go, you know, why don't you just use my audition and we'll just go have lunch right now, you know? <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, that's the thing you're listening for. Where do you fit in and what works and what doesn't work? And you want to go further into what works, if that makes sense or not. Yeah. Yeah, Isaac, uh, what's uh, um, for yourself personally, as far as a, you know, with working, what's important to you as a human being, as far as a, we're all pursuing acting or entertainment or the different various jobs here. Um, what else do you do to bring yourself to centered and to, to be in alignment and stuff that's, you know, and instead of, so it's not always a struggle and a pursuit because it is, how do you deal with that? You know what? I, 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 I don't mind telling people this. I'm a, I'm a Christian guy, so I call I pray a lot, and I'm always kind of centered. I know what my uh, happiness is, and I I'm always constantly trying to be in a place where I'm feeling good about what's going on. Even if I'm on a set or or on a, on, a, on something that's maybe not going right technically or whatever, I'm always trying to just kind of center myself, not get over frustrated. I don't get frustrated about things. Don't show my frustration to other people because I want them to have a good experience with me also. And so I try to give everybody the, the, the great experience with me. I try to have as much fun as I possibly can because I think this is all fun to me. This is a lot of fun. I love getting paid to have a lot of fun. That's why I, <laughs> I really enjoy this business too. Yeah. And I try to give everybody else that's around me a very good experience with me so that later on when they do talk about me and people will talk, you know, I always have a negative or a positive story. And I can't remember, I can tell you so many times I've been to comic cons or whatever and people know me from some of the characters I've played. And they're like, man, you're really nice. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because I'm not the character. I'm just me. And I'm just the <laughs> But they always have a story about, man, I met my favorite actor, such and such. And he treated me like I was gum on his shoe. And I was like, that's too bad, man. I Maybe he was having a bad day that day. I don't know what to say. But I always want to make sure you have a good experience with me. And that's what I try mm -hmm. to do. But, I, but seriously, I just always try to have a good attitude about what's going on. And that keeps me centered. Plus, I mean, really think about it. I mean, I, I get paid to go out and have fun, make voices. And I get that's they pay me money to do this. 
I can remember when I was a kid and they were like, teachers mm-hmm. like, Isaac, why are you making that noise? <laughs> you get paid for someday, lady. You know, but um, you know, I was just, you know, <laughs> but I was a good student too. I wasn't a bad student. I wasn't I was a <laughs> class clown, but I can just remember, you know, the past and then fourth grade, you know, some teachers are like, uh, who's making that noise? <laughs> Oh, that's just me. Uh, can you can you do uh, can you give us a um, a couple of your character voices, just to... okay? Because I can remember Bill was talking about doing a four eight hour session. I don't think I've ever done an eight hour session of voiceover before. I mean, the longest I've done is usually do four, and that's it. You know, but I was doing. Well, I, I was sorry if you have back to back sessions. Oh, okay, okay. I did a session one time where I was doing it was just, this was for Transformers, as a matter of fact. And the guy told me the reason why I got the job is because he listened to my tape when I did the audition. He actually jumped back because I was like, Starscream, <laughs> the Transformers are coming. Oh my so God. Can't do that. I love it. Hours. Yeah. Oh but um, I was able to do that character, and that's how I got the job. And then they they synthesized it even more. I think they should have just kept it as it was. Oh, no, that's great. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. But, um, and then, you know, I, Thanos is my favorite because he just is so much fun because – the villain gets to say some of the best lines. Yeah. And I remember he was attacking New York City. <laughs> he was talking yes. to the humans. He's like, you earthlings disgust me. Oh. <laughs> With your screams of fear and confusion do if you amuse me. You may continue those. <laughs> oh my god! Wow! Can you can you can you do like a, a, a like a something that's opposite of that? Like a like a like a little bird or a little little elf or something squeaky. Do you have something like that? I... Welcome to the next level of excitement and entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, you can't All right. Like All right. That. That's crazy. <laughs> wow. Let's go. Okay, Chris Calhoun, it's your turn. <laughs> oh, great. Do Thanos. Do something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Give us a Thanos. <laughs> Take squash New York City. Um. How about? It doesn't have to sound as good as, as Isaac. It can be different. Yeah. Can... Um, I'm on the spot. Holy yeah. shit. No. Oh, shit. Like, I'm like a stupid voice actor. Like... Where are my lines? <laughs> right? Open book test. Read your Open shirt. Open book test. I love that. Woodstock record. Um, what about, uh, what's his face? Um, I am Optimus Prime. <laughs> it is in this year on the earth of 2009. We must save civilization. Nice. nice. Can, can you say this? In a world. Yeah. <laughs> they all have to do it now, right? In a world where <laughs> one man could rise above everybody else to save civilization. He was Jerry Angelo. Oh, oh wow. played right to you. That's so good. <laughs> so good. I actually did a character in, in the movie Arctic. It's our feature film that we did, uh, written and directed by Tom Bocci. I play this uh, comic book uh, obsessed serial killer. And this was my voice. This is what I got to. It's not going to sound as good as you guys, but I, I, I got to create this for the character. It was, uh, all right, here you go. It's not every day you get to play tour guide for a friend. <laughs> And I do that through the whole uh, in character, that's, that's like like character. like Daniel Day Lewis or you know or the or Marlon Brando. But I did the character through the whole movie. It was we won so many awards. We were actually have that's, you do you have yeah. yeah, I'll, yeah I'll just have. Keep, Arctic yeah. is great. Yeah, but we and, didn't get to ask Chris how he manages his ups and downs in the industry, um, and I am very interested to hear this wacky version. I've. I've got to echo Isaac. Like it's, you got to stay positive. Like it gets like, to be honest, you know, I'll be honest too. Like it gets to me some days, like, you know, you, you don't get as an actor, film actor or a voice actor, uh, you might not get a gig for a month. You know, you're careful with your money. Yeah. Uh, and you feel like, shit, what have I done wrong? What, what's, what's wrong with me now? What, what, a month? Be, well, that's, you're, you're doing pretty that's good. That's pretty, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> but, but we're talking, you, you know what I mean? But you, you take it, and I, I reiterate, I kind of, I digress. I go back to like, you know, being a doctor, you went to medical school to be a doctor. This is your, this is your job. This is what you want to do. You just, this is not something you just want to, oh, I want to try it out for three or four years. So see what happens. No, this is, 
and, and I'm sure, you know, some people with their families, Hey, uh, so how's that acting thing going? Um, so, uh, you're thinking of maybe doing something else and said, no, <laughs> this is my job. This, this is what I do. Yeah. Um, and it's, I think it's, I spend more time trying to convince them than I try to convince me <laughs> <laughs> at, at times. Um, yeah, it's just trying to stay positive and, and know the universe is there for you. You ask the universe, things will come back. Um, and just don't be a dick to anybody. Like, <laughs> I think like Isaac said, like you, or you meet somebody and they're said, man, that guy was just a dick. Maybe they were having a bad day or something, but yeah. like, just stop doing that stuff. Just be <laughs> nice, you know, and stuff will come yeah. back. It, it's karma. It's give and take and, and the love of other people and, and the love of this business. I, like, I, I love doing this. When I'm on set, I'm, I'm, I'm like a little kid in the candy shop. <laughs> <laughs> or if I get a gig for a voice thing, like I'm like, ah, yeah, let's let's have some fun. Uh, and do this. There's Phoenix. Talk talk to us about this uh, these photos here, Chris. Um, I was one of the operation leaders. Um, Robert, the, the uh, bald guy, he was he was kind of my uh, my nemesis. He was really great to play off because mm -hmm. it's like we had we're, we're different opposite, and we got to come together for a common good. Uh, but there's still that conflict there that was going between us mm -hmm. um, and made friends. Uh, Ian down there, the big shirtless Ron guy. Um, <laughs> Ian, not Ian, sorry, Ian. Um, he's He has the same um, manager that I do. And it's the first time we actually met face to face. And it, it was good to play with everybody. It was it was such a fun time doing this. Um yeah, and you're you're great too, by the way. We're, I can't wait. Uh, we'll be having some some footage coming out very soon for Obscura. And it was it was. I remember on set, like everybody has their own thing that they do, and I, it, you know, it's kind of it was. You want to keep it heavy for the storyline, so you can be there for the characters. And but then, like uh, you know, between takes and stuff, I'm making jokes as you know, and and like driving Aubrey crazy with bad <laughs> jokes. Um, it's just to have some fun and know it is. But, and just... then, you know, when I'm trying to prep for when we're going into something, I had, I'm, I can't remember who it was. And I said, I thought you were nuts. And then mm -hmm. now I get it, like with what you're doing. And not only in acting, like in voice stuff too. Like you just don't wake up in the morning, get in front of your microphone. And there is a, there's an inherent thing that's in you as a voice actor and as a voice ar voiceover artist. Um, but it, it's cultivating that and practicing it. We have more of a chance to maybe to practice because we're, we're auditioning on a daily basis for stuff and we, we got stuff. But when you, especially when you're starting out, like just grab everything you can. Like my daughter started watching the Simpsons during lockdown. I think she's watched every episode <laughs> and I go back to like, hi everybody, you know, say, <laughs> and she's, I get mad at her if she doesn't say hello, Dr. Nick, you know, like this, <laughs> goofing around with like, watching different cartoons and stuff and just absorbing yourself in that world. It's, and it, it can be a big payoff. I like that. It's a, a lot of play. And I think, you know, we, it, it is a balance because we do, we have so much fun doing our work. Um, it is play and, uh, but you, you, there's business and there's play and somehow they live together in this industry and it's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, it's. I think it's it's serious play because that's yeah. where the magic happens and the best art happens, rather than just dialing it in. And you've you know seen it with established actors and say, well, that movie kind of sucked. Mm -hmm. Well, why did it kind of suck? Or and and to go into voice stuff, like, well, why did that voice thing just kind of suck? Well, they just kind of dial it in. They just weren't there. You know, you you got to invest yourself in that. Mm. Yeah, you can tell a passion project versus a a project that just was made for money. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we, we wanted to say thank you to each of you for coming on to Satellites Podcast Live. This was an incredible fun time for me. Um, I learned a, a tremendous amount. Um, you know, Bill, I always appreciate your wisdom. I always appreciate what you have to share. And I, I really appreciate you keeping the energy in such a way that it's just always, you know, 
as it is, you know, I love that. Thank you. Um, Isaac, thank you for being here. Wow. What a, I, I gotta say it again. What an instrument, what a we're, voice. We're gonna hang out. <laughs> we're, gonna, you know, we're all going to go out too, like we said, Isaac. So I'll, uh, I'll get back in touch with you. <laughs> Isaac, that was cool. Chris, yeah, no thank you. You are it's always a, a minute too. So yeah. with that? it's been a minute. And it's been a while. Yeah, it's huh? been a minute. I interrupted your conversation. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> Chris, Chris, thank you so much for for coming back on. And I thought you were gonna play a song. That's why I thought you were gonna be. Oh, oh, oh we're gonna I'm play you. Out. It up. Yeah, but I only know I'm only hard. writing depressing songs right now. Oh, do it. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, there's a little hole. Are you sure that's a studio? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah, we can right. hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Medicate my pain Make it numb my brain Take away this shit Just need one more hit Medicate my pain Wash away that rain Get me out of this state Latch me under my feet Medicate my pain I wanna shed this old skin Where I'm going and now where I've been Ain't ever gonna get it from my own sin Medicate my pain I won't play the whole thing. But. Yeah, Thank no, you. no. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with this performance, um, yeah. you guys are like, that was awesome, hand in hand, man. man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you. Thank yeah. you for for that's yeah. cool. Yeah, that's no. cool. I have not made anything that cool during COVID, so I'm pretty. I'm pretty <laughs> <laughs> for you. Thank, oh, uh oh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go and match you. I have been practicing. Yeah. Uh oh. Is I think we should leave it to the experts. Yes. <laughs> cool. You want these these oh, no, no right, not cool. after these guys. These guys. Go get my didgeridoo real quick if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, do it. Oh, please. No, I'm not going to go get a didgeridoo. Oh, oh. come on. <laughs> Awesome. Anyway, Tiffany, thank yep. you so much for coming on. Thank as well. you. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. Gosh, you guys, thank you. I I really hope that um, everybody listening was as as inspired as I am right now. I'm very very um, excited that you all were able to join us. So yeah, and uh, and so we're gonna be finishing off with another song from David. Uh, this is uh, another song that's on our Helium Three label. We got some artists uh, that we represent also now, and uh, Aubrey's one of them actually. And we have Jared. Alan, who does country, um, and uh, we have some other songs that we're collaborating with. But uh, the the soundtrack for the Deception is is phenomenal. We've been putting that together for some time, and all this this will be one of the songs on there. Uh, we actually we had some, we had a we had some a, a very big artist reach out to us today and offer one of their songs for our soundtrack. Um, I can't I can't disclose that because it just happened. But um, we're very excited about that, and little <laughs> things help our help us get to the next level. I'm um, very excited to to be able to do all this and to to provide work and experience and and get to be part of something. I, I was like, well, I was a little guy, I never got picked for things. So if you build if you build it though, then you get to be part of it. So 
<laughs> as as Bill will know. Anyway, thank you guys you so much, you guys. You guys take thank care. You. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Later. Thank you very much. So what's your worry? Love.